Good morning, everyone. I'm glad to introduce the work of our team, FET GAN, Font Effect Transfer via Keyshot Adaptive Instance Normalization. I'd like to introduce our work in four parts motivation, method, comparison, and the application. Okay, let's go into the first part motivation. As you can see, the title of our work is the Font Effect Transfer. Specifically, it's a subtopic of the Text Effect Transfer. So we have two questions. The first one, why we need to transfer the text effects? The other one is, how font matters? For the first question, some researchers have given the answer. In the work called T-Effect from CVPR 2017, the author gave the definition of text effect transfer. It aims at learning the mapping between text view effects while maintaining the text content. This is a common task in design, but it is tedious and repetitive to apply text effect to all characters manually. This problem is especially serious when the character set is very large, such as the Chinese or Japanese character set. In the existing works, the inputs are source text S, source effect S prime, and the target text T. The output is T prime. The T prime has the same glyph as T, while sharing the effect of S prime. These four objects constitute an analogy. As an assistant editing tool, it can automatically transfer effects from one glyph to another one. It reduces the labor cost of designers. However, the existing text effect transfer work didn't consider font changes. It means the T prime cannot transfer the font of input S prime. But how font matters? Perhaps we need some examples to illustrate. For the same content or text, different fonts indeed make a difference. I will always find you, it can be lovely and happy. I will always find you, it also can be scary and creepy. Although only the fonts are different, all of us can feel their emotions are completely distinct. Here is another example. This is a note posted by someone on the door, written in the font of Comic Sans. Please keep the door closed, thank you. Then some guy posted another note, possibly a letter, which read, Please don't use Comic Sans. So we can find that the choice of fonts is highly correlated with the viewer expression. In real design scenarios, such as poster design, the goal of text effect transfer is not only to keep the colors, shadows, and the texture to be the same with the input, they also need to use the same font and the input to make the style or feeling harmonious. So, it's our research problem, text effect transfer with font variation. As the picture shows, the transfer not only covers various features such as colors, shadows, textures, but also have the font changes. Since there is no need to build an analogy, comparing with the existing method, other methods only require two inputs. Furthermore, other method can transfer effect from text to graphic object robust. In addition, we also have an application to reduce the label cost for the font designers. Okay, let's move into the method part. For humans, after changing the effect of a text or graphic, we can still identify the original structure. For example, a triangle 
whether changing color or adding texture, people can recognize that it's a triangle. Similarly, a letter W with a different color, texture, or font, one can still read it as W. From such observation, we assume that a visual object can be decomposed into global structure features and local effect features. The global structure features are stable and invariant to the change of effect features, and it always can be recognized correctly. And the local effect includes all other factors. Based on this assumption, both font and viral effects can be classified as the local effect features. As an attempt to separate the structure feature and the effect feature of a viral object, we proposed the FET GAN framework. Specifically, we use an encoder to extract the representation of the effect as an effect code. As the key reference samples have the same effect, the effect codes of them are encouraged to be the same. At the same time, we train a generator G. Given the effect code, G translates the object to the target effect. Of course, given the effect code of the input, G can reconstruct it. We train the generator G with the adversarial training strategy, so there is a discriminator. This is a multi-class discriminator. We will elaborate on it later. For the design of the objective function, there are four parts of losses. Due to time limitation, it will not be described here. Please refer to our paper for details. Now, let's take a closer look at the network architectures. The encoder E learns effect code from key reference samples. How the effect code introduced into the generator is the key of our model. Inspired by the style transfer approaches, we know that the first order statistics of features can represent style. Therefore, after three fully connected layers, we replace the mean and the standard deviation of the features in the middle layers of the generator. For the discriminator, to achieve our multi-domain transfer task, we generalize a patch-based discriminator to multi-class version. The output of the original page-based discriminator from peaks to peaks is the patch tensor whose channel number is 1. We change the number of channels in output to the number of classes of the training dataset. Such a multi-class discriminator can be regarded as C discriminators that share parameters except the last layer. Each class is a different effect domain. For bank propagation, we only update the parameters in the channel, whose class is corresponding to the reference images. This multi-class discriminator allow our model to be generalized to new effect. Giving samples from the new effect, we randomly flip and crop them to make a temporary dataset. After building the dataset, we initialize a model based on the pre-trained one and then fine-tune it. Because the samples in the current dataset do not belong to any class of the original dataset, in order to new effect, we append a new channel to the output of the discriminator. We send some real samples to the pre-trained discriminator to obtain the prediction of all C channels. The maximum one from this prediction is taken and the, the parameter of this channel is used as the initialization of the C plus one channel. Such an initialization method can select the existing effect which is most similar to the new effect. Then we fine tune a new model to support the new effect. That's all for our method. The next part is comparison. We conduct four comparison experiments of our model with five other approaches. In the first row, we compare the results of text effect transfer with font variation. For this task, 
we expect models should output the image which has the structure of the source and the real effects and fonts of the reference. As you can see, the result of our FET gain is closest to that of a human, while other approaches cannot transfer the font correctly. The second result demonstrates the robustness comparison of source input. We believe that all text effects contain the same global structure information about the text. In this experiment, we change the source to a different style which doesn't exist in the training dataset. You can also find that our model is the most robust. The third row shows the comparison of the effect transfer between complicated effects. In the last row, the transfer from the text to the graphic object are shown. Here is the ablation study. We study the effect of the different losses. This is another ablation study, which demonstrates the influence of a key on the training, testing, and the fine-tuning stage. In this experiment, we verify that effectiveness of the fine-tuning strategy, which is used to extend the trend model to the new effect. We download a new text effect from the internet and fine-tune the print trend model with 40 iterations to support the new effect. For the application, we design an experiment of complementing characters in the font library automatically. We collect a new dataset, including 100 fonts, each with more than 700 Chinese characters, 52 English letters, and 10 numbers. There are a total of 83,700 images. The figure shows an overview of these fonts for the same Chinese character. We choose this Chinese character read as Yong, because it is known for containing all the stroke types. For the 100 fonts, we take the first 80 fonts for training and the remaining 20 as unseen for fine tuning. In the first two rows, there are four transferred examples of characters in the dataset. The transferred images all retain the structure feature of the source and the font feature of the reference. In the third row, we pick two characters not included in the datasets. The results are also satisfactory. In the last row, we randomly choose a new font in the remaining 20 fonts of font 100 and fine tuning the trend model by four samples for 40 iterations. After fine tuning, our model can also perform font transfer tasks for the new font. This is a more specific example for the print trend model. Given eight samples as the references, it generates 100 characters with the same font as the reference. We open sourced the code of the project and provided the print trend models on two datasets. In addition, the font 100 dataset is open to community too and everyone is welcome to discuss with us. That's all. Thank you.